Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Gareth Greenaway joins me. We're going to talk about turnkey Linux, ready-made images that you can drop right into your system and get running right away. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Gareth Greenaway. Episode 299, recorded July 2nd, 2014. Turnkey Linux. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you weekly, or as often as I can get to it, the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may have never heard of, but it might be using every day and not aware of it, or projects that uh, you might want to check out because something's really cool about it. So uh, usually joined by a co-host this week, no exception, Gareth Greenway. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Randall. Thanks for having me back. And uh, it looks like you're in the same place the last time we did a show together. Up in, uh, I am in the exact it? same spot. I haven't moved since the last time we did a show. <laughs> That's dedication, standing right there with that mic. And I'm also uh, back at my uh, ZipRecruiter main client office, except I'm back in the big office. So... Uh, actually, the conference room, so it looks a little different probably from what we did two weeks ago. But uh, that's cool. So we've got a great guest on today. We've got uh, the project is called Turnkey Linux. Turnkey Linux is a project that uh, um, uh, our, our guest, Jeremy Davis, has a lot to do with. Uh, joined on actually after the project got started, but knows everything all the way back to the beginning. So, uh, so for what I could tell so far is it looks like this is a way to have pre-canned images uh, that can be deployed uh, for having like particular configures like... English, Randall, particular configuration. So like uh, I want, say, a Drupal installation or I want a MySQL LAMP stack, things like that. Uh, uh, have you looked into this at all, Gareth? I have just briefly read about it this morning, but like you said, it, it looks like it's a, 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 a system or a, a project designed to create ready-to-go pre-canned images of, of popular applications and projects um, that people can easily deploy into um, like virtualization and environments or, or the cloud. Um, so it looks really cool. Rather than us just ramble back and forth about uh, what we think we know, let's go ahead and bring on an authority on this. Uh, Jeremy Davis, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing? Hey, uh, thanks for being on the show. Where are you speaking to us from? Uh, I'm speaking from Tasmania in Australia. Cool, cool. I was actually there about five or six years ago. Um, I think mean, it was more like seven or eight years ago. Man, it's been forever since I've been to Australia, but uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. I went to the, uh, the the chocolate factory. Is that still there? Oh, yeah, Cadbury. Yeah, that's down the other end of Tasmania, from about yeah. 200 k's away from me. Yeah. Yeah, I took the tour and I kept bugging the lady saying, so the will, the Wonka or, or the, uh, the, the Oompa Loompas are right around the corner here? <laughs> she just kept saying, no, no, there's no Oompa Loompas. Stop looking for those. <laughs> drove her mad, drove her mad. Anyway, so we're not here to talk about uh, chocolate, although that would be a great topic for a whole hour show, I think. <laughs> uh, well, not for Floss Weekly. That would be the opposite of Floss Weekly. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're talking about turnkey Linux. Why don't you sort of give us the 30,000-foot view and what problem it's trying to solve? Well, um, basically, it was started back in 2009, uh, 2008 sorry, by Alon and Laraz, um, and basically the idea that they had was that with their skills and knowledge, they could create images that are ready to go and that they could appeal to um, a, a wide range of people. So, you know, uh, someone who's never used Linux before could um, download an image ISO, burn it to a disk, install it, and then they've got a, a LAMP server ready, set up, ready to go. Or uh, someone who's a bit more technical, they probably know how to do that themselves already, but, you know, maybe they might want to um, just quickly deploy some server software. So rather than having to set it all up themselves, they've got a good starting point. So that was that was pretty much the idea to start with. What's really the trouble with that, though? I mean, I just get on, I just you know, download an image. Uh, in this case, it'd be a Debian image, and say, "App to get this, and app to get that." I'm done, right? Is it? How is this solving that problem easier? Well, I mean, yeah, for sure. If if you want a fairly simple system, you could do that. Um, but one of the advantages of Turnkey is that it's uh, got things like automatic security updates already um, set up to go. So they install 
every 24 hours. It checks for security updates. So, again, Ooh. that's something you could configure yourself, but it's just sort of a nice added extra. And, and how, how long have you been involved with the project? Not right from the beginning, right? Or is it, or am I wrong? Um, yeah, not quite at the beginning. I, um, I came across it, well, it just sort of quite randomly. I, I worked, for, worked for a local NGO here and, and one of my side roles was sort of IT management. And so I, I came across Turnkey like that because I wanted to just do some testing for web pages and stuff like that and check out a couple of different CMSs and yeah I sort of asked a few questions on the forums got a few answers and you know sort of it, it dragged me into the whole Linux world really because I, I hadn't had much to do with it before and yeah I got quite passionate and just helped a few people out on the forums that were more noob than I was um, and then as, as I went I learned more and more which gave me more that I could give back and um, so yeah since about I think 2009 I started so nearly five years now mm -hmm. um, developed quite a quite a close friendship with the with Alon and Laraz the co-founders and back at the start of the year they asked me to um, quit my job and come on board full-time to give them a bit of a hand Cool, and I don't want to skip over that part that you just you just threw an NGO in the middle there. Uh, you're more you're not really you didn't really start out to be a programmer or, a, or an IT guy. You're just somebody looking for no. a solution. Can you talk yeah, more about I that? Yeah, I was actually I'm actually a, a social worker by profession, which is yeah, why I was working for the NGO, uh, working with with young boys and long term unemployed people and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, IT has always been an interest and a bit of a passion of mine um, from, you know, right back when I was in primary school. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, sort of got sidetracked along the along the way, um, but ended up sort of came back to it in a very roundabout sort of a way. And it, yeah. it's interesting actually too as a, as a social worker, um, social justice values are, are sort of pretty important to me and I guess that's where – the connection to uh, Turnkey really came up, being being totally free software in the in the floss sense of the word. Um, yeah, just sort of really quite inspired me that those those social justice values about democratising information and um, that sort of stuff it just seemed like a perfect fit, really. Cool. So you're actually seeing that, um, that, that that you're actually fulfilling your own values that you have by contributing to open source software. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I mean, that's what Turnkey is about. Turnkey is about empowering people, basically. Um, and you know, some of the some of the solutions, um, you know, even even look at um, sort of humanitarian efforts. Um, there's two. Two, we've got oh, one skip reminder. Shandy's one of them. It's a um, software for dealing with crisis management. Um, and there's a Sahana Eden is the other one. That's right. And that's um, so the Shandy's, I think, is more about um, sort of crowdsourcing support in times of crisis. Um, yeah, you'd have to you'd have to talk to them um, to to get all the details about their great software, but. You know, it's just a couple of examples that they could be launched. Um, you know, they're available in 32-bit images as well. So, you know, even on some quite old clunky hardware, they'll run quite well. Um, so, yeah, you could launch it in the cloud, install it on a server in 20 minutes, and then and then you're ready to go. Cool. Okay, so what are some of the – it looks like on the front page there's more than 100 of these uh, these appliances already set up. Uh, can you name some of them, and maybe some of the more unusual ones that you might be able to describe? Some of the, um, well, the, yeah, there's a, a heap of them, and to be honest with you, I haven't used all of them. Uh, I've tested quite a few, and just just through sort of helping people on the forums, often I'll you know launch a new one just to have a look. But there's all the you know all the regulars that you expect, like you mentioned at the start, Drupal and Lamp, and got Joomla, WordPress, all those ones. Um, Red mines are, are a fairly popular one, so we've got mm -hmm. a, a number of um, other ones sort of around around that sort of theme 
uh, revision control, sort of bug tracking, so Bugzilla and um, things like that. Got some probably not quite so common um, CMSs, um, uh, Concrete 5 off the top of my head, um, mm-hmm. quite, quite a nice little one. Um, some sort of chat and messaging apps. There's a um, eJabbard client, uh, so not client, sorry, server. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, yeah, and frameworks too. That's another one with quite a, quite a few frameworks like you know Node.js and um, Cake PHP is one that I've had a bit of a play with that I quite like. Ruby on Rails, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I guess there's sort of everything from fairly you know, simple basic servers like, um, you know, like the LAMP or the, the Core is our, that's our sort of our base product. They're all, all the appliances are built on top of Core. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, and then through sort of frameworks and then through apps that, that run on frameworks. And what what is this provided in? Is it some sort of like a virtual box image, or is it meant to run on be booted on bare hardware, or 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 how else, how would how would I take one of these and actually run it? Whatever you want. What what have you, <laughs> depends what you want to run it on. There's, there's about nine different build types that we currently supply, and you know basically we're looking at the, all the code. The build code for them isn't. Um, it's open source, but it's not public at the moment. But we're hoping to publish that soon, and hopefully um, encourage the community to get on board. And if they've, there's a format that they want to see supported, then the, you know they can add the code to do that. I understand you've been building uh, AMIs for EC2. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. We're, um, we've had had AMIs for a long time. Um, basically, that was sort of one of the early images that we supported. I mean, originally it was just ISOs, um, but then, yeah, the VMware and VirtualBox images, and then the, the AMIs for Amazon. So we've got um, all the appliances in the library, plus we've also got our own sort of customised front end called the Hub, which basically uh, currently it only supports Amazon, but we've sort of got plans for the future. We'd like to allow it to support our other partners, because we've got a, a number of other hosting partners that uh, host host our images, and ideally we'd love it if we could have a, a single integrated front end for people to log into, and then they could launch a server on Amazon, they could launch a server on Linode, they could, you know, wherever they wanted to launch their servers, where, wherever Turnkey is available, then they could control it like that. Hopefully, that's the that's the plan. I think we've had a guest on Floss Weekly about, about th- two years ago when we were going through that whole cloud phase that actually would do that. But uh, I don't remember the name of the thing. Now that, now I'm going to get yelled at by the Red Hat guys about uh, why I don't remember the name of the stuff that he brought me. Um, but uh, it sounds like, uh, so so uh, um, would I take, like, say, this this ISO that I could download and just hand that as the boot disk to um, uh, VirtualBox? And, or do I need to then, is that an installer that then it gets installed on my on my virtual it, hard drive, or how does that work? If if you download the ISO, then you can yeah you can burn it to a disk. You can um, DD it to a USB stick. Um, it's uh, their hybrid image, so they'll boot off a USB stick as well. Mm. Um, or you can like if you wanted to use VirtualBox, you could actually just download the virtual machine file rather than downloading the ISO, and then it's all pre-installed. You don't even have to. Um, you know, it, it's also on the ISO though. It's got a live mode as well. So you, if if you want to, you can just run it in live mode and just test it out. Obviously, um, you know, it's it's no good if you actually want to have a tinker with it. But if you just want to test it and see what it can do, then that's that's not a bad option too. So if I have an existing application like one that that a turnkey Linux um, image isn't available for? What's the process for getting that application available as an image that I can use and other people can use? Well, if if you're a bit handy, then um, we've got basically our all our build infrastructure is open source too. It's on our um, GitHub page and it's called TKL Dev. Uh, and basically it um, provides, you, you provide um, a few things. Firstly, you need, um, you know, like an install script or whatever that you might have 
um, and uh, apt the like the packages from package management uh, in go in another file, and then you have a, have an overlay. So if there's any configuration files or whatever that you that you want to overlay straight over the file system, and that's pretty much it. And so you can download a copy of TKL Dev. You can clone one of the appliance sources that we've got on uh, GitHub. You can have a bit of a tinker around with it, add a few extra packages from Apt if you want. Um, you know, wh whatever your software requires, all the dependencies and everything. Um, and then type make and away you go and, and that'll make an ISO. So currently TKL Dev only, only provides ISOs unfortunately. Um, but as I, as I sort of briefly mentioned earlier, we, we plan to um, get all that build code out in the open. So then basically with your TKL dev, you can spit out a Zen image, you can spit out an um, open stack image, you know, then you can launch it straight on, uh, you know, wherever, wherever it needs to go. <clears throat> so one of the questions that we had from the IRC chat was uh, around uh, Docker-based images. Have, have has there been any talk within the the Turnkey project about uh, having support for Docker? Yeah, well, we currently have images available in a Docker format. They're probably not um, it, not probably in the true sense of the of the way Docker operates. Um, Rather than like they're they're actually still the whole operating system containerized. So, um, but basically for for version fourteen, we're we're on cur currently on version thirteen, about to release our thirteen point one maintenance build. But the big plan for version fourteen, which hopefully late this year, maybe early next year, um, will be utilizing that whole um, sort of Docker paradigm much more so you'll actually have um, you know the all, all the apps will be running in inside docker containers within within the the core so look like I mentioned before we've got our our base product is called core so that would continue to be the case but then all the all the other applications would then just be containers inside core rather than um, you know, requiring a whole new server, so it sort of allows that whole idea of clustering within within one server, like like Docker's so great at. Cool. Um, if I was to if I was to take a, a turnkey um, Linux image and I was to spin up a, a server um, based on that, and it was humming along nicely and working, and there was a new image came out, like a newer version or or um, uh, bug fixes or whatever. How what would be the process for me taking my existing image and, and kind of upgrading it to that newer version? Would I have to kind of rebuild the the image, or is there is there kind of like a, an upgrade um, an upgrade path? Well, you've you've got a few different options. I mean, basically under the hood, it's Debian. So um, if it's apt packages and stuff like that. The, Usual app get upgrade will will work fine. With some of our software, um, well, with a lot of our software, it's not packaged, or the packaged versions are really old. So, say something like WordPress, we install from upstream. Um, but Word WordPress has got a pretty straightforward upgrade path. Basically, um, you need to tweak a few permissions uh, in the in the files, and then you can just use the built-in updater. Um, and and that'll update itself. Um, if if we actually um, you know like when we jump Debian version, so when we went from Squeeze to Wheezy, uh, with that you can, as I said, because it's Debian, you can do the in place upgrade. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of those. Um, so we've actually got another tool called TKL BAM. Which is basically uh, it's turnkey Linux backup and migration, and basically the the way that works is it knows what parts of the file system are important, um, and it will check for databases and it'll dump your databases and just back up the the important files, um, and then 
as long as you've got internet connection, um, it, it defaults to Amazon S3. So you can actually just use it as your, your day-to-day backup. But you can also then associate your TK Bam account with a new server, with even with a new version, and then um, migrate your data into a into a new server. Very cool. Um, so, what was the reason? What was the the thought process? Um, a lot of these these images are based on on the Debian distribution. Why why Debian? What what prompted that uh, decision? Um, well. They, originally, they were based on Ubuntu, which, um, you know, the, the Ubuntu is great. Um, and and I guess one advantage is having the, the regular support cycles with the LTS versions. But basically, yeah, we sort of had a few, um, few bits and pieces along the way. Um, there was a, a couple of bugs, and I know it can happen with anything, but... From my personal perspective, I can't speak for the other guys, but from my personal perspective, um, it Debian just seems a little bit more solid and stable. Um, as I say, there's the downside of you not not always have those uh, long term uh, long term support. Although I, I note that Squeeze is just currently going into a trial version of LTS, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, yeah, so we sort of moved across to Debian. The, the other Probably another major factor was the fact that um, in Ubuntu, it's it's only the packages in the main repository that get security updates. Uh, all the all the other repos are um, just community maintained, and I found often they weren't always up to date with with security back patches and stuff. Whereas with Debian, all all the packages are. are uh, have security updates, so that that for us was a big factor. Having that extra security. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, speaking of security, one of the things that, that you mentioned uh, was that uh, Turnkey has a, a um, the ability to automatically install security updates. How can you speak a bit about that? How that works, and and how you do it kind of safely without um, completely trashing like a, a an install. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically the. That's because the security updates only access the security repo and Debian, um, you know, like I said, Ubuntu was pretty good, but Debian especially, the security updates are, are rock solid and because it's, um, you know, like many, many Linux distros, because it's only backporting the security fix, the chances of it causing issues are, are minimal. I guess you can never completely eliminate them. There's always a, a, some degree of risk. But in the in the five years that I've been involved with Turnkey, I think there's been one um, one security fix that I can think of that caused dramas, and it was actually a uh, um, yeah, it was it was in Ubuntu in um, Lucid um, that basically broke cron, which is pretty pretty nasty one really. So one of the questions that, but, that uh, we had, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. I was just going to say, but you know, in in five years of daily security updates, I think that's pretty good. And and I think Debian's, like I said before, is probably um, even better tested. So, sorry. Cool. Uh, so one another question from the the chat room: um, Are there any plans to have a um, to support a, a mean stack bundle or any other newer JavaScript frameworks? Um, basically, we're happy to support anything. Um, at, at this point, we we don't really have the time or energy to be developing a ton of new um, new appliances. But there's so much great um, floss software out there that you know we could have a library of 300 different appliances and still not be um, you know digging too deep. I I don't think so. Yeah, there definitely is. Um, but what would be even better is you know, if someone wanted to come along to the, you know, that wanted to help build one, basically, because um, a, a lot of the time people that use the software are, are much more expert in knowing the best way to set it up, the, you know, the, the best trade-offs between security and usability, because, you know, as we all know, we can't have it all. Um, and that's, you know, part of the trouble sometimes with, with building turnkey systems that you need to 
um, you know, pick the right compromises that make it easy enough for the person to get started, but you know, not so open that um, they're going to get hit by, you know, malicious, you know, spammers straight off the bat or whatever. So, um, yeah, sorry, I've just lost my train of thought. <laughs> sorry, no worries. Uh, so, if someone if someone listening is is interested in in creating a, a turnkey um, image or, or system, what are the, what steps would they take to to kind of go about doing that, and how would they get it listed? Um, as an available uh, image on the on the turnkey website. Well, basically, the the process is is that um, they'll they'll need to get themselves a copy of TKL Dev um, from the from the turnkey GitHub. Uh, it's yeah, the turnkey Linux GitHub repo, um, and clone an appliance that's close so you know maybe if it's a php app then the lamp appliance might be a good start if it's a um a ruby app the ruby on rails maybe um or you know we, 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 the tomcat appliance it just depends on the on the best starting point clone that um make it whatever tweaks they need to to build the appliance um and once they've got that to a point that it builds an ISO that that works that in that'll install, um, then they hit us up for a pull request and um, and then basically yeah the Alon and Laraz there the you know I'm you know I, I don't mind doing a little bit of scripting but I'm not much of a programmer so um, they'll have a look over the code and if they're happy then basically the next time we do a release it'll be released. Um, and that's another thing we're hoping to um, to get a bit better with. Basically, we've we've done our releases roughly every six months, but it would actually be nice to be able to, you know, release when ready. Basically, so if there's a new appliance, it'd be nice that yep, shoot that in into the library straight away. So that more sort of dynamic, reflexive. Um, or responsiveness, I guess, to the community is, is something that we that we really want to build on. So, but yeah, the forums are pretty um, pretty good spot to get help too. If there's anything that they don't quite understand, I, I think TKL Dev's fairly well documented. But um, you know, it's one of those things if you you know you, you can't unknow what you know. So there's probably gaps there that that um, people might see that. Uh, even that sort of feedback around documentation and and that sort of thing is really helpful. Very cool. Um, so w one of the um, one of the the closest uh, I guess projects or, or products that I think of um, when I think of of kind of um, Linux and and free and open source project image um, software is is Bitnami. Um, can you speak a bit about like how Turnkey compares to Bitnami, like differences, um, just how it's how it's different, how it's better, how it's how it can look to improve? Yeah, well, I guess I mean one advantage Bitnami's got because of the way they approach the. I, I guess we're you know we're trying to reach similar ends, um, but taking a slightly different path. Um, you know, but the way they have their installers means that I guess for, for Windows users, it's really easy. They can install that way. We've kept um, kept away from that and basically kept to the, the idea of a fully pre-integrated image rather than um, an installer stack. Uh, I, I'm not uh, – I, I haven't had heaps of um, – time talking to the Bitnami guys or whatever, but from my understanding, even their Linux images are actually, you know, created using using their install stacks. So whereas our images are really tightly integrated right from the word go, um, uh, I think another big advantage we have is the fact that all our, uh, all our materials all out there on GitHub. So... Like I said, if someone wants to tweak something, they can they can do that themselves. If someone wants to create a new appliance, they can do that themselves. If someone even just wants to see, you know, how do we, you know, set the permissions on the, you know, whatever server, um, you know, they can go and have a look at the the configuration scripts, the build scripts, um, and and then they know exactly what's going on. So, I, I guess. Um, 
some of the other things, you know, like the, the custom um, the custom backup solution that I mentioned earlier too, TKL BAM. Um, you know, that's that's something that that um, adds a fair bit of value, I think, to the turnkey images. Um, and actually, just to go off on a little bit of a tangent, that that um, that will actually run on everything. It's not even though it's sort of turn, turnkey in name. It actually you can install it uh, in Ubuntu or in a desktop system and use it to to back up your desktop as well if you want. So how does this organization actually work together? You know, you have the two founders and you. Are there other people working on this? At least a significant amount of their time. Um, well, we've got a, we've got a number of um, communi- fairly active community members, but we're the we're the three main men at this point. Um, We've uh, got another guy that's um, more sort of a businessy business head on him, um, and he's been quite involved with the uh, Bitcoin community actually, the, because that's a, another sort of, a, I guess, a bit of a tangent in a way that that Turnkey's not sort of looking to perhaps get into um, more client side operating system stuff as well. And so we've, we've developed a product called BitKey, which is sort of, sort of turnkey related, but it's sort of a side project, I guess, in some respects. Um, and that's for, you know, um, safe, basically, yes, yeah, sort of safe turn, uh, BitKey, Bitcoin, sorry, um, transactions. So I, I can't speak in depth about that because it's not on, on, uh, haven't had a lot to do with Bitcoin, but both Alon and Laraz in Israel, they've um, they've had a lot to do with it and are quite enthusiastic about it and, and saw a, a need for a software appliance like this. So it runs from a USB stick uh, completely live and allows you to, um, you know, basically, you know, you, you know that it hasn't been tampered with, no malicious software, malware sort of installed in it for when you're doing your um, Bitcoin transactions. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know, of course, as a as a social worker, you probably have a training to starve for your art. But I'm wondering, is this a labor of love for the three of you, or is this part of a project to ultimately uh, pay you a paycheck, or or something in between? Oh uh, well, basically, can you know, like at the end of the day, you don't need to live like a like a prince. I mean, we all need to eat, so obviously, um, you know, we need to need to make some money, and I guess our ultimate goal is to, you know, is to have, um, you know, probably a million appliances and to have, um, you know, a, a heaps of people working on it. So the, the idea of making more money would be good because it it mean we could employ more people and then we could do more. Um, but as far as we're concerned, I think um, all three of us, you know, we, um, you know, want to live a good life, but it's not all about the money. The money is sort of the mean, means to an end really rather than, you know, rather than the goal. Yeah, yeah, that's that's admirable. I, I'm admirable. I can't speak this morning. It's been bad. Um, so, um, I, but there, you do actually have a, 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 a platform as a service uh, project. You, the, you mentioned earlier the hub. Can you tell us how that works yep. in terms of paying and the little bit of money you're taking off the top or off the side or whatever it is? Can you talk about that? Yep. So basically, um, it's it, you, you pay a monthly fee, and um, for that, you get access to a range of um, Amazon. Uh, su- sorry, so you can launch Amazon servers from the from the. Um, it, it's basically a web app that allows you to control all your all your TKL BAM backups if you if you use the S3 storage. And it allows you to um, launch servers on demand, monitor servers, see what they're up to. Um, and I, I mean, when, when we build the build the appliances, one of the one of the things that's really important for security, obviously, is that all the um, you know root passwords for the MySQL account and you know maybe the admin account of the particular software that's installed uh, all set on first boot so the the beauty of doing it by the hub is that you can put all that information straight in before you even launch your your server um, mm-hmm. you can associate uh, your domain name there it's it's basically a, a really simplified single page 
access to launching Amazon turnkey servers on Amazon, basically. That sounds like actually a really great project that could be forked off and do something else with, right? Because I don't know of any, many other solutions that are like that. You might be more aware of that than I am, but, you know, because one of the things I remembered when I was trying to set up some boxes from one of my clients, you know, it's like you go to this page and do this, you go to that page and do that, then you got to find your image and you do this, but you're basically taking care of all that, right, on, 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 a, on a single web app. Yeah, yeah, basically, and, you know, you just sort of use the drop-downs, okay, what, what, image do I want from the library, what version do I want, what, um, you know, do I want 32 or 64 bit architecture, do I, you know, and then you can um, pre-associate your SSH keys if, if you want to go that way or set um, set your root password. So, uh, I mean, like, like I mentioned, ideally in the future we'd like to have it supporting other platforms as well as Amazon. Um, just because, again, you know, that, that creates, um, you know, just makes it easier for people to do what they want to do uh, rather than sort of boxing them in because, uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, we we want we want to help people do what they want to do rather than try and bend them to, you know, what we want to do sort of thing. So, so I think, yeah, I think that's that's important. Yeah, I actually, we had a question in the chat room from Untoward who said, uh, how much does this cost and does Amazon hosting cost extra? And from what I saw on the web page, basically you're paying Amazon directly for the resources used there, but then they're also paying you for the, the meta charges for being able to work through your web interface. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I mean, basically at, at the moment you can um, launch the images direct from the marketplace uh, on, on Amazon and then uh, currently you just pay the Amazon charges um, or if you launch through the hub if you want to launch servers then you can have one micro server for free so basically if you're on the on the Amazon free tier then you can you know you can do your, your free tier uh, for free through the hub but beyond that you need to uh, pay a monthly fee and, and they start at ten dollars a month um, and go up depending on the size servers that you want um, I think from memory um, the the um, say the bronze plan, which um, gives you up to medium size instances, um, and then the silver plan gives you up to large size instances, and then the um, then the platinum plan gives you any instance size you want. Cool, cool. And uh, do any of those levels uh, provide support, or is it all community support? Um, yeah, the the platinum level provides um, support. In fact, I think even the silver, I should know these things, shouldn't I? Off the top of my head. <laughs> Can I read it to you from your page? The silver plan is community, the gold is email support, and platinum is priority support, says the webpage. Beautiful. Thanks, Randall. You saved me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was sitting all these tabs open just before the show, so I had to figure out what the heck this thing was. Yeah. So. It's a slight, I, I do slightly try to train myself in this show that we're about to do. It kind of helps to have better <laughs> questions that way. So, um, so this has been around for five years now. Is there, uh, and you've been with it for most of that. Um, yep. is, there any, is there any surprises in the direction it's taken from when you started? Well, I, I mean, I guess it's one of those things that, um, yeah, I, I think the, it's probably hasn't been as quick to develop as I might have liked, but it's become crystal clear since I've been sort of behind the scenes, well, even more so behind the scenes um, in this, you know, since the start of the year, just how much effort it takes to, just to keep doing the same thing, let alone innovating. And, and I guess the innovation stuff is where, you know, that, that's sort of what gets you excited and gets you sort of, you know, like I said earlier about the talk about version 14 and, and going to the sort of Docker container style. Um, you know, that stuff, that's the stuff that you sort of get excited about and want to jump into. But you do have to, you know, provide to the community that you've got already um, by, you know, giving them the updated appliances and, you know, the the basically a, a, a better starting point because obviously the, the images get out of date um, and so, you know, you don't want to have to be, you know, sitting there waiting for updates to install for 10 minutes before you can even uh, start using your service. So the, those sort of maintenance jobs have, have just got to be done. Um, 
and I'm sort of going off on a tangent again. <laughs> no problem, no problem. We get more information that way than we'd ever would have had before. So um, uh, one of the things that I'm sort of curious about then is uh, are, what hosts turnkeylinux.org and are you eating your own dog food on that? Um, to be honest with you, I don't actually know 100% um, <laughs> who, who hosts turnkeylinux.org. I think it might be, I don't know, I think it might be Linode actually. Um, so in which case, um, it's, it's, um, a LAMP server, I'm pretty sure, with, with, uh, oh no, it's a Debian 6, yeah, Debian 6 server, so. But it's something, that we, I was just going to say, yeah, it's, it's something we discussed earlier, um, Alon and Lorraine and myself about eating our own dog food, and, and we agree that it's an important thing to do, but at the same time, you know, we never profess that turnkey is the right answer for everything, every time. And so even for ourselves, if we find another product that's a better fit, then, you know, we'll use that or and, and or we'll look at maybe providing a, a new appliance that might fulfill that need. Okay. And one of the things I'm curious about too then is um, uh, I, we haven't talked anything about the technology of, of, of how this is all set up. What, what's, what languages are involved? Uh, what technologies are involved uh, for both the, like the dev product and the deploy product and the, the hub interface. Can you talk a little bit about what's being involved here behind the scenes? Yeah, well, most of it's, um, well, I mean, as far as the build code's concerned, a lot of it's just bash, um, you know, simple simple bash script. Um, Alon and Loraz are big fans of Python, so um, Python's used a fair bit uh, in, in the build code as well. Um, the hub is uh, runs on Django, which is like a, a, a Python framework. Um, so yeah, I, I guess Python's sort of pretty high up, um, and, and Bash really. It's it, it's not that complicated in many respects. Like it, if you've sort of got a bit of an idea about um, basic sort of Python and Bash, then you know you too could build an appliance. <laughs> cool. And uh, that, is that code also all open source? I mean, can I see what's actually running the hub as part of my uh, downloads from um, GitHub? Um, unfortunately, the hub's the that's one of the only things that isn't sort of fully open source. We, we're not really quite sure what to do with that. Um, I, I guess ideally we'd love to make that completely open source too. But I guess it, it comes down to that sort of thing that at the moment the hub's the only you know, the only real revenue that we have that keeps the lights on. Um, yeah. And, you know, we've sort of tried tried donations before and, and, you know, it's nice, but it's not consistent enough to, to be able to sort of build a business on really. Sure, sure. I mean, it's, it's okay. It especially sounds like, uh, you know, you can go ahead and give the rest of it away, but you might as well have some part of it that uh, helps you with your revenue stream. You wouldn't want to immediately create your own competitor, which would be a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah. Sort of at that stage, yeah. So, what's on the roadmap? Where where's this where's this project headed? What do you see, sort of like the the near term, you know, next thing, next thing, next thing to get created? And who decides that? Just the three of you? Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, it's it's Alon and Larez's baby, but they're very open to feedback. Um, and I guess you know that's perhaps part of the the reason why um, I get on so well with them because I think in many respects we sort of share a similar vision that. I mean, I don't think there's a really sort of concrete, you know, um, where this is all going in, in many respects. Uh, basically, you know, like I said, um, you know, been doing the service stuff for a long time, looking at, you know, maybe going towards some sort of um, specialised desktop sort of type um, mm. setups, like like I mentioned, the BitKey. Uh, I think that the the Docker containerization plan for version 14 is pretty exciting. Um, that'll be a bit of a game changer in a way because whilst uh, I, I think the plan will be that we'll still host some ISOs and stuff, but um, the, probably the preferred way of deploying your apps would be to just download core and then, um, you know, then build your, your Docker containers on top of that or download them. 
So, I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of um, oh, and you know, the, uh, also mentioned the hub supporting other other um, VPS and cloud providers be fantastic. Um, TKL BAM to support more storage. That's that's already pretty good. Um, pretty good range of storage that it can support, but you know, more would be good. Um, but as far as actually sort of concrete where turnkey is going, I think basically if we if we sort of continue to try and fulfil our mission, um, I, I don't think that's one that will probably ever get a hundred percent right. So there'll always be room for growth and and improvement there. So um, yeah, so who knows where it'll go. And what kind of people are you looking for to help you in that vision if they're so inspired? Um, well, basically, you know, anything that you want to do to help out. I mean, uh, um, you know, like everything from, you know, sharing it with your IT savvy mates through to, you know, posting on the forums, helping out with documentation, building new appliance, even just reporting bugs or, you know, suggesting features, all those things are, are always helpful and, you know, just general feedback. Do you have a translation set up already? Do you have any translated to any other languages? No, we don't. That's actually something that would be really interesting to, to make it more accessible. And uh, I know in the past we had a, um, had a, a community member that um, – uh, that yeah, he he was actually looking at um, looking at getting a, a Spanish translation going, mm. and I, yeah, I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Um, I mean, I, I'm I only speak English, um, and Larez and Alon have also got um, Hebrew as well. But you know, obviously, we're not going to be in much of a position to translate to a lot of languages. So yeah, if any anyone's interested in in that sort of thing, that could be that could be worth worth taking a bit more of a look at. Cool. And where are they located? Uh, they're in they're in Israel. Um, so I've never actually met them face to face, but <laughs> um, yeah, we we've had a few good Skype chats and lots and lots and lots of emails and uh, Google Hangouts and yeah. So we've actually become quite close, despite the fact we've never met face to face. That's awesome. Five years in this project, and you, you haven't actually met your, your cohorts. That's, uh, that's pretty darn cool, actually. Uh, and, of course, I, I think from math is right, that's like a 12-hour time, no, only about a six-hour time difference for me, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's about six or seven, seven hours, I think it is, yeah. And I was just going to say, I, we didn't mention this at the beginning of the show, but it's about, I, if my calculations are right, it's about 2 a.m. there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hence but, why but I'm you, looking a bit sleepy. <laughs> but, but are you the kind of guy that you know a lot of a lot of programmers get up at noon and work through most of the night? Are you one of those, or are you more of a day guy? Uh well, I, I historically been a bit like that, but um, more recently I've started getting up early and going to the gym. So I've, I've become a bit more of a early morning guy. But I think the gym will be a bit later tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine too. Sleep in, sir. Sleep in. It's been, it's great. Hey, uh, so I have to ask you, uh, we've covered a lot of things. Uh, we're almost out of time though. And I'm wondering, is there any other thing that I left off my list of questions that uh, you would want to make sure our audience is aware of? Um, not particularly, but I, could, I mean, I could talk for hours about turnkey. I, <laughs> I love it. And I get really excited about it. And, um, but yeah, so n nothing in particular, just, but you know, like, yeah, I guess probably one thing is that, you know, when I started, I knew nothing about Linux. I knew nothing about running servers. I just had an interest. And I, I think that's the thing that if, you, if you've if you got a bit of an interest, then you don't need to be a superstar programmer to have a, have a go and, and actually provide some value for Turnkey or for any any um, FLOSS project. You know, just getting in and, and talking to people, you know, reporting bugs and, and just simple stuff like that's relatively, you know, pretty much anyone can do that if they're interested. So, yeah, and you never know where it might go. Exactly. And uh, so I presume you have like the usual things like an IRC channel and a mailing list and uh, forums and uh, a open bug tracker? Uh, we use we use GitHub for tracking bugs and feature requests. So there's actually a, um, there's links to it from the website. Um mm -hmm. But 
uh, yeah, it's sort of basically a, an issue tracker on on GitHub. Uh, we did have an IRC channel for a while, but it wasn't getting a lot of traffic, so we ended up. I think it was causing more frustration for people that went there and found nobody else there than than anything else. So we canned that, um, and we'll, so we've only got the forums really, um, but you know, also GitHub for the for the um, issues and and also the coding coding side of it if you want to do a, a pull request if you found a bug or want to make something a bit better. Do you have a sense of your community size, people that have pulled this and uh, started using it for real things? Um, well, uh, it's sort of, it's hard to quantify. Um, you know, we've got, um, there's literally thousands of, of turnkey servers running on Amazon um, and you know, in any given month, we we have thousands of downloads of ISOs and virtual box images and and stuff like that. Um, probably, um, you know, depend depends how active active is, but there's probably, you know, a core group of, you know, maybe maybe uh, half a dozen or a dozen um, people on the forums, and then there's probably another another, you know, twenty or thirty that that sort of fly by and drop in and then and then obviously yeah we have a lot of people that just sort of post a question and, and get answered and go on go on their merry way or um just drop in and add their two cents to a conversation but um so you know it's um and i mean it's interesting because when when you're on the forums you sort of uh, often think that oh you know everyone that's using turnkey must come here and 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 have a look and then you know i get an email from a guy that oh yeah been lurking on the forums for the last three years and you know just wanted to say you know blah 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 whatever cool. um so yeah you just sort of realize that there's actually a lot more going on behind the scenes than perhaps might be immediately obvious do you ever plan on maybe uh, having a meetup? Or, I mean, like a, like an actual conference on this. Uh, that way, at least you'd finally get to meet your cohorts. Yeah, that'd be great. I I wouldn't mind going to Israel, and I think they're pretty keen to come to Australia too. So um, we'll just have to make sure we don't do it at the same time. But but um, <laughs> yeah, that that'd definitely be great. <laughs> But I mean, and then also inviting your your community people. I mean, basically having like maybe a, a, a two or three day, you know, a, a set of se sessions or something on that. You know, actually have a real conference or a real unconference, probably like people would come. Oh and yeah, just post things. Yeah, that that that'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. I think we'd have to probably do that in the US though. That um, we have quite a few Australian users and and European users, but um, probably most of our users are in the US. So. Well, that's yeah, probably, what probably was frustrating. There. That was probably what was frustrating about IRC because you know you're on really early and their Israeli guys are on really late, and so we'd never have, <laughs> never be on the yeah. channel. The time most of the US is on, right? So crazy that yeah. way. Well, my uh, audience would yell at me if I didn't ask two more final questions. Uh, first, what is your favorite scripting language? Uh, my sp favorite scripting language. I don't know about favorite, but Bash is probably the one I'm most comfortable with. Um, yeah. Python, okay. Python's fairly user-friendly too, but yeah. Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It's no, none of them in my column, but that's okay. You didn't say Perl at all, but that's okay. You're allowed. You're allowed. You're the guest. Uh, <laughs> second, second uh, what is your favorite text editor? Um, I'm, I'm trying to learn Vim. Um, okay. Alon and Loraz are, are big fans of Vim, and I basically on, on my laptop, um, since I started with them at the start of the year, that's the only text editor I've got. So, I, you know, it's been a case of having to learn. Um, but yeah, traditionally, like back back in my Windows days, Notepad plus plus sorry, Notepad plus plus was my um, my text editor of choice. Um, and a app that I found quite similar, um, Bluefish, is is a good one on on Linux for a sort of more full featured text editor um but yeah you know, i must say i've sort of found now i've got the hang of him a bit it is it is much quicker for for getting around text documents cool cool well uh we're out, we're out of time here so just wanted to say thank you for staying up till 2 30 in the morning and i'm sorry you're <laughs> going to be missing your exercise in the morning but this seems well worth it because i'm sure a lot more people now are informed about turnkey linux and uh you certainly have introduced them to that so thank you very much
No worries. Thanks for having me. It's been uh, great meeting you and great having a chat. Very good, very good. That was uh, Jeremy Davis, who is uh, one of the key honchos, head honcho, not the head, well, the key, one of the, what, one of the guys, one of the, one of the important guys on Turnkey Linux. What do you think, Gareth? Uh, it sounds like a really great project, um, and it's a really inspiring story of, of, of a free and open source project, how, how someone who uh, had no intention of, of really like being a part of the project or contributing to the, pro to the project, but was just interested in it for his day job, is now one of the, the main three people kind of driving the project. Um, that, yeah. so those are the kind of stories that you, you just like, it, it just gives you a really good feeling to hear. Well, there's so many different ways people get into open source and, uh, you know, different, different motivations, different drivers. You know, I, I got into open source mostly because I had been, I'd used shareware back when I was young. And, and uh, then I'd heard about uh, the whole uh, GNU project. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. I wonder how far this will go. And boy, I guess now we've seen how far it can go. It's uh, just about <laughs> everywhere. So pretty amazing how that works. And uh, I have to thank you for uh, sort of filling in some Linux knowledge for me. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm sort of I'm not embarrassed, but I, I choose deliberately to not learn too much about Linux and because I'm not running Linux anywhere important. So, oops, I said that same phrase that got me in trouble before. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> uh, my clients always do, though, so that's the problem. I have to learn just enough Linux to get by with uh, my client's software. So any, anything else before we move on? Nope, I'm good. All righty. So next week, next week is our very, very special episode number 300. I'm really looking forward to this. We are going to have not one, not one, but two co-hosts. Uh, we're going to have Aaron Newcomb, a frequent uh, co-host, in the studio and often uh, frequently host. We're going to have uh, Dan Lynch from Liverpool phoning it in, Skyping it in, I guess. And uh, there's this other guy here we're going to actually have as a guest. I think his name is like Leo Laporte or something. It must be some sort of French guy. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Shouldn't joke around with the guy who's executive producer for this show. Yeah, he runs the Twit Network, and he's, you know, start, helped start the whole Floss Weekly back in the original days. And uh, we're going to have him on and talk about what's happened with him since he's been on the show and also um, uh, get his feedback and impressions of what we've been able to take the show and where we've gone with that. Uh, so that's, I'm really looking forward to that. That's next week. Next week, do, you know, same bat time, same bat channel. Just tune in next week. Uh, right after that, we just added this to the schedule. We have uh, Aaron Gupta and Simon St. Laurent. Uh, Simon, of course, was on about uh, two months ago talking about OSCON. But uh, they really wanted to promote this new thing they're doing at OSCON called Kids Day, trying to get more kids involved in uh, open source software and getting them straight and trained out right from the beginning. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the show scheduled after that is actually OSCON. We're going to be live at OSCON July 23rd. Uh, I believe uh, Simon Phipps will be there with me, so I think he's going to be my co-host there. And we'll, we'll, we try to look for some breaking project, like we broke the whole uh, OpenStack thing a few years ago, which was really fun uh, on this show. So uh, Simon and I will be hunting down on Monday and Tuesday to figure out who we're going to have as a guest on Wednesday. So I have no idea who we're going to actually be speaking to. Uh, we are, of course, still opening up Q3. I'm starting to start with the invites this week and uh, next week, and until they're all full again. Um, you can see that uh, spreadsheet, the big spreadsheet that has everything that we're coordinating with on twit.tv slash Floss, which is the home page for this show. You can follow us on Floss Weekly on Google Plus uh, and at Floss Weekly, all one word, on uh, Twitter. Uh, we do have a live chat. We took a couple of questions from the chat. We always appreciate that when people can ask questions that we might not think of. We're at uh, live.twit.tv and our normal taping time is 8.30 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesdays. So uh, that's when you can come join us. Now you can follow me personally, Merlin, M-E-R-L-Y-N, but more likely you'll see interesting stuff on Google+. Plus. That's a Randall L. Schwartz there. And in fact, if you use the plus address, it's R-A-N-D-A-L-L -L Schwartz, which is not the way you spell my first name, but it's including my middle initial, which is my professional nom de plure. So... Um, I just got back, by the way, uh, from uh, my UK trip. That was a lot of fun. Got to go to a few new countries that I hadn't been to before. Uh, my first time in Ireland, uh, Dublin, I had a, a nice Guinness, for, which is my first beer in two years, which is sort of interesting. But I thought I would just break my record there for that. I also had a great Floss Weekly and Pearl meetup. We had probably about, uh, about 25 people total show up over a course of about a seven-hour period while I was slowly fading from jet lag, which was sort of interesting. Uh, Dan also gave me, because uh, I ended up in Liverpool a week later, he gave me a nice uh, walking tour of Liverpool, which was a lot of fun. I forgot to go where the Beatles actually started playing, which was a lot of fun. Um, I just got interviewed for a 20-minute segment. I'll let you know the actual URL when it comes up, but for a show called Linux Luddites. Uh, this is a show that seems to be about uh, sort of you know, kind of being angry at the way things go sometimes and trying to explain why they go that way and so on. But uh, apparently they needed me on the show, so that was a lot of fun. And I will, um, I will I'll let you know more specifically when their show actually comes up. I think it's coming up this week. I'll also be on an upcoming episode, I believe it's next week, of This Week in Law. They're going to talk about my uh, legal situation, my legal case, and uh, 
uh, the thing that's uh, uh, well, near and dear to me because it's uh, affected my life for the last 15 years. Uh, and then I'm also going to be in Orange County for the next two weeks. Uh, I'm thinking maybe there uh, might be interested in a Pearl or Floss Weekly meetup. If so, you, you can reach me at Merlin at Stonehenge.com and see if you're interested, and we'll try to set something up. I'm also going to be at OSCON. Uh, be sure if you see me at OSCON, come up and say hi. Um, I always like to hear directly from y'all, especially if you have ideas about things you want to hear on the show and stuff. I'd love to do that. Uh, Simon Phipps, of course, will be there as well. That's enough plugging for me. I'm going to I'm going to stop it right there. Um, Gareth, what do you want to plug today? I'm going to plug the there's a, a an open source conference happening in Seattle um, in October, October 24th mm. and 25th at the Seattle Central Community College. Um, but their their call for papers is currently open and will close on the uh, 27th of July. Um, so if anyone is interested in speaking at a conference, I highly suggest you submit a paper for that conference. And what's the URL for it? Uh, it is. You ask that, huh? uh, yeah, I should mention the name, shouldn't I? That would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the it's the Siegel Conference. It's the Seattle GNU Linux Conference. So it's s e a g l dot org. Oh, that's a nice name, actually. So is this sort of a not competing with, but paralleling uh, Linux Fest Northwest? Then I believe so. Yeah, it's uh, there. The dates are different. Um, like hmm. yeah, Linux Fest Northwest is earlier in the year, but yeah, this is yeah. a another. You can never have too many open source conferences. No, you're never going to have too many of them, especially if they're you know low cost as opposed to OSCON, which uh, although I'm told is pretty high cost, even though I haven't paid ever to go to it. So anyway, uh, part of the advantage of being me. So anyway, that's enough of that. I'm just, just scrambling out. There we go. So I hear the music coming up, so we'll see you again next time on Floss Weekly.